practice perfectly. Practice precisely. Practice independently with Live View Golf. This is Golf Smarter. Welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, gentlemen. Hi, hey Fred. Hi, Fred. It's good to have you here. It's interesting to have two people live on the show at once. We don't do this very often, but I'm excited to have you both on because you're going to give two sides of a story that are going to verge right together that are kind of perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick, you're a PGA certified teaching professional. Correct. I'm here at, at Nichols Club Monterey, and I'm the director of instruction. Okay, very good. And yeah, I want to thank everybody here at Nicholas Club Monterey. Got a chance to play with my friend and come out and meet you and play this course. And it's, you know, it's struggling with water as a lot of California is, but it's a really fun course. It's, yeah, it's a really good it's course. It's a beautiful facility as well. Yeah. yeah, it is a beautiful facility. And Shane, you are the creative person of this partnership, right? Yes. You're, you're the inventor of the product that we'll get to in a few minutes about Live View Golf. Yes, thank you. Um, but Patrick, I want to start with you and talk about uh, how video is used and the advantage of using video in mm -hmm. teaching golf. Well, as you know, video has changed quite a bit throughout the years. Um, initially, when I was taking lessons from Ben Doyle, he used to take a sequence camera. It was black and white mm -hmm. and it was a Polaroid and he'd stick it under his arm for it to develop and then he'd pull it off and he kept an extra index fingernail long so he could draw lines on it. He'd show your, your uh, swing plane, for example, or your head, whether it was staying stationary or not, or whether you were maintaining your lag on the downswing. So really, this is kind of an offshoot from that. And you know, the Live View Golf camera, the, as far as the intellectual you know, side of it. Yeah. But you know, from that, video has gotten progressively better. We had the black and white. We had those big, heavy-duty cameras for a while, and those were very expensive. Mm -hmm. Of course, now we have the iPad. I remember sw a, a company called Swing Solutions when I was at Pell Beach Golf Academy, um, Jim Fleming. And, uh, you know, it was very expensive to do video. Of course, now right. we have apps that can do that. Right, exactly. But how is video used and a lot of people have taken lessons um, and they see video, but what is the value to an instructor? Why does video help you so much as an instructor? Well, it, it, sh it gives me the ability to show the student, this is what you're doing, this is what you think you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they don't realize I do that. Or, you know, like one of my students, he says, how come my swing is not as pretty as others? You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> you don't realize that they're so off balance that they really are, or say they're so off plane than they really are. So um, from that, you know, when you see juniors, for example, from day one, having the ability to see themselves, it's really made a difference in the progression of their game. And that's why we're seeing a lot more common denominators now with, you know, for example, leg action. I don't know if you remember the, the Jason Day and the uh, Roy McElroy. Their swings are nearly identical. So I think from the old days, there was a lot more personality in the golf swings. The Arnold Palmers, the Jack Nicholas, Johnny Miller, the Ben Hogan, they all had their own personality. But I think video is bringing people together now biomechanically and seeing what really is the most efficient. So we're seeing a lot more kind of a common denominator, as I call it. So are we trying to create like a, an exact swing perfectly replicated or doesn't no. everybody have their own swing everybody does have their own swing but there's slight variations to that yeah i've always had a lot of frustration when i if i get a, a lesson and they go video and they show me video of my swing and then they go and here's what tiger looks like here's what you're doing with tiger's right. not i'm like I'm, I'm not even trying to be Tiger. It's impossible for me to have you know, that kind of flexibility and strength. Why are you comparing me to Tiger? And that's why the, the inst a really qualified instructor, it's important for them to know that you're not going to be Tiger Woods. What we have to work on is a variation that suits your need, that fits your stroke pattern. I come from a golf machine background, so there's 24 components, and within those components, there's variations. For example, you might have... The golf machine, you mean like... The golf machine, as in Homer Kelly. That's what book, I thought. Yeah. Like way back to so the golf I, yeah, machine. So yeah. I come back. So that's what Ben Doyle's teaching was based off of. Um, you know, Bryson DeChambeau, for example, he, his, his, his swing is based on, on golf machine background with Mike Shy. You know, there's a lot of different disciples that came from the golf machine. And we're really trying to w understand the golf machine more and more because it's so sophisticated. But the true... Um, interpretation of the golf machine is that you can have many different variations 
for a certain component. For example, you might have an overlap, you might have interlock, you might have baseball, you might have cross-handed. Those are all stroke type or grip types. Right. They all and they're work. all legitimate. They're all legitimate. Yeah. So there's no standard way. You just a really qualified instructor again will be able to know what your stroke type is and and let you know what it is so that you don't get off. And ultimately the goal is not to change somebody's swing or what their body can or can't do. Ultimately the goal is getting the club squared impact. Correct. Okay. Squared impact and going on the right plane. And, and making how does sure video make that so much more effective for a teacher? Well, for example, you can see on the downswing whether they're coming across the plane or they're under the plane mm -hmm. or they're coming down through the center of the golf ball so mm -hmm. that all the vectors are being directed through the center of the golf ball. You can also detect the divot if it's, if it's, if it's in front of the golf ball as Bobby Clampett's research has shown from the impact zone. Yeah. You know, the bottom of the divot is three to four inches in front. Right. Um, I thought that was, you know, he really That's nailed huge. it. He really nailed it there. You know, yeah. you can have all so these different many swing people styles. Are, are like trying to lift the ball off the ground and right. they get this divot five inches in front of the ball and right. don't realize the bottom of the swing. And there's actually a direct correlation between a person's handicap and where the bottom of their divot is. So Really? For, yeah. So wait, 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 keep going with that. <laughs> so for example, professional the bottom of their divot is three to four inches in front of the line from the back of the ball. If you were to draw a line in back of the ball, the deepest part of the divot is three and a half to four inches in front for a professional, say, on the, on the tour. Mm -hmm. A single digit or a good club pro might be three inches. Okay. And then as you progressively work back, their handicap goes back. So, wow. so for example, 36, the bottom of the divot is probably right underneath the ball. So if you can get people to swing on plane to get the bottom of their divot forward you've nailed a great deal of it. Just to get them to get a divot is a big deal. Is a big deal. <laughs> because as you know, they, they all try to scoop up on it rather than hit down on it. Right, right. Um, so video has really, utilizing video for golf instruction has really changed Absolutely. It's your changed business. It. It's changed the business, but also the accessibility of it, you know, before right, that's where I wanted to go next. Like with swing solutions, you know, you had to pay money in order to get it. And I remember uh, being at Poppy Hills after Pell Beach Golf Academy, they had a machine off to the side where you could put money in it in order to see your golf swing. But now, shoot, it's it's right your iPad or your iPhone or you know some other Android device where you can look at your golf swing, and you can say, okay, I don't like that one. Delete. Try it again. And your friend can do it, right? You know, for you. But just having your iPhone and, and put in slow motion, mm -hmm. right? If you're using your iPhone and video is slow motion, why isn't that enough? Why doesn't um, that work just as well for somebody? Because a lot of times they misinterpret it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where you need the qualified PGA professional who mm -hmm. can, and even within the, you know, those professionals, there's some that know more than others right. because their interpretation of it, you know, why am I off the plane? Well, how do I get there? You know, that's the whole key. Sure, I'm off plane, but how do I get on plane? Right. And there's so many other elements that a PGA professional is going to uh, see that an amateur will not. Um, like, you know, yeah. I remember shooting some video of a friend of mine and, and he goes, well, my hands are in front of the ball when I hit. Yeah, but your hips are not moving and you're, you know, you're, you're coming from over the top. And right. there's so many things that, that a PGA professional has been trained to look at that mm -hmm. we can't see. In fact, just recently, yesterday, I was playing with a friend of mine he couldn't figure out why his divot wasn't forward because he felt like his hands were forward, but he was flat on his back foot. You know, mm -hmm. he never got over to his left side. His hips weren't turned. So he didn't have really an effective pivot, which would allow him to have that forward swing bottom to allow him to get the impact of the ball first and then the divot in front of the ball. Uh, so there's, there's a there's lot of different. Yeah. There's so many different yeah. issues that come up that you'll find on video, uh, a sway left to right sway into your hips, mm -hmm. right? No rotation at all. Um, what are some of the other things that, that jump out to people that are like, wow, I never knew I did that? Well, um, sway is, you know, staying in posture is a huge thing. You know, not only is it in the setup, but it's during the golf swing as well, mm -hmm. through impact. For mm -hmm. example, we were just working with Shane's daughter this morning, and she has a tendency to come down a little bit too much, so her divots get a little deep, and mm -hmm. she gets a little too narrow. So stand what, it, what do you mean by narrow? By she doesn't keep the width in her in her left arm. It breaks down a little bit. Okay. Okay. Good. So 
posture is a huge part of it. Again, you have to maintain posture throughout the whole golf swing. And then, because that allows you to have an effective pivot. If, if, if you get closer to the ball or you sway, you're not rotating around a constant axis. Okay, so posture is very much a part of it. You know, you heard the old PGA acronym, posture, grip, alignment. You know, alignment's another part of it. And alignment facilitates the ability to swing on plane for example, if I aim way right, I'm looking left, that's going to change my swing plane, isn't it? Mm. Okay. So alignment facilitates the ability to stay on plane, but it doesn't mean you're going to be on plane. So those are the little things you look at first. You know, if somebody's grip is really poor and they can't hinge the golf club, they can't load the golf club, they can't develop any lag, can they? Because they never really loaded it. Right. So you can always look at the old PGA acronym first. And do, if, do you use PGA acronym? Yeah, I do. And do you start with I with, do. I with do. Posture? I start with posture, the grip, alignment. Because we but recently talked someone started with grip. Thought that it was uh, better to start with grip because once yeah. you have the grip correct. But I remember at one of the PGA teaching summits, you know, Ben Doyle was back there. And he had a ten- tendency to be controversial. And he said, my God. He finally stood up and said, when are we ever going to get past posture, grip, and alignment <laughs> here? You know, we already know. We've been talking about this for how many years? Right got all these qualified instructors around and everyone Ben sit down please please mm-hmm. sit down but it was he's right though you know you have to maintain a certain lag and a certain plane all the way through the swing you know and that's that's where video is so precious I think and does video work better for one I want to say age group but I also want to go from uh, the quality of a golfer from a low handicap for a high handicap does wor- video work better for some other than others or does it work for everybody it, I think it works for everybody but with people that are older people that are say um, less able to move their body as well less flexible less flexible mm-hmm. you're not going to get them I think you're not going to get them to be able to make drastic changes yeah they're as, pretty ingrained say as you know, Shane's daughter, you know, and Megan, you know, she's, what, she 14? She's 15 now. 15 now. So she's going to be... Keep it down, okay? <laughs> she's going to be making <laughs> change. You know, I could just tell her, hey, do this. Because she worked with video at a very early age, see? So she knows what to do. So it really enhances your awareness overall. It, absolutely. Wow. I think that's the key part of it. It enhances your awareness where you can make changes rapidly. Sure. Or sure. like a Sydney Burleson. Fred Shoemaker talks about awareness, right? And yeah being totally aware of where your hands are, what your swing is. And it's it's because it goes so fast. uh, So many of us have Mm -hmm. trouble like identifying, you know, like I know what I'm supposed to do. And there, my swing just took a second to go. And what happened? Yeah. Why did that happen? But when you grow up with video and you're accustomed to visualizing it, you can get, they make a change real quick. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. I, um, like I was going to say, Sidney Burleson, um, I've never seen anybody able to make changes so quickly. You know, she went to Stanford, play golf there. Um, you could just tell her one thing, and boom, she just knew how to do it. Because she went to Stanford. W- you can, yeah, you can, anyone go to Stanford, you tell them one thing, they got it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's interesting because actually, um, I don't want to jump the gun, but, you know, we've been... Uh, Did we ask you to talk? Well, <laughs> I'm kidding. Go ahead. We've, I'm we've sorry. Been, we've, we've had the, uh, the Live Golf camera out with a number of different instructors and um, a number of them working with very high level professionals Mm -hmm. and uh, their feedback has been exactly that which is you know the better the player the more useful they find this camera because they they make those changes so quickly because they already understand all these different positions that they're talking about a lot of times it's just a matter of awareness they just didn't know that they were you know off plane or too steep or something as soon as they see it they go okay well if that's all I need to do, then they immediately fix it and it just helps them improve so much faster. I thought that was really amazing to, to get that kind of feedback. That's mm-hmm. really interesting. So then let's, let's transition into Live View Golf, uh, the product that you guys are introducing. And I'm really excited to help you, Thank you. Help you launch this. Um, how long have you worked with it and how much influence did you have on, well, on sh- what the sh- product was? Shane and I first met uh, at Poppy Hills and... Uh, he had brought his daughter Megan and then later on his other two daughters Caitlin and Riley and he noticed a difference in my teaching and um, I think I'm a little bit more probably detailed meticulous mechanical precise geometrical Um, so 
I think he. You left. <laughs> you you know got this one. Well. I, okay. I think he appreciated that. Um, I don't really hold back too much, and so, at initially we had drunk. I had shown him with some aiming rods, some you know different colors. You know, mm-hmm. there's your takeaway. There's your there. And, and anyway, from that I think it kind of metamorphosized. And then and then when I had when I had the video and I started drawing lines and this is where you should be and his daughters would go home to practice and they really didn't know. Hey am I doing what I think I'm doing? They'd look in mirrors, just like I did when I was a kid, and looked in bay windows, right? Yeah. Sliding glass doors. Yeah. But every, again, every you're, you're up here like this, <laughs> and you're <laughs> looking up, but you weren't staying in your original posture. You weren't looking down at the ground. Uh-huh. And so from there, I think, you know, Shane was from the industrial camera business, and then I came in, you know, with the golf side of it, sure. you know, kind of like how, and he, we put our two minds together and we said, Hey, your technical experience with the camera, mine with where the line should be and, and how, it, and how this can work for somebody to be able to feel it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the key is you start to swing and you can feel where you are without coming out of posture. You can draw your lines and that's what we're doing now. We're, we're making videos to what to look for and how to look for it and how to draw your lines. Let's say you want to correct a slice. Hey, you want to direct, you want to change a hook. You know, these are the lines you need to make or you want to work on your posture. So Shane, you want to go on from there? Yeah, kind of going back to um, the reason I ended up working with Patrick, I think, um, you know, I, my, I've, I've had my girls learn golf ever since they were tiny. Um, it's not the only thing they did. My oldest daughter was a gymnast. She was a high level competitive gymnast for many years. Um, but then as she got older, she decided she wanted to get into golf. And so, um, I'm a big believer in if you're going to do something, you should do it right. So Mm -hmm. I started going around the Bay area. So we live in Cupertino, um, and started looking at all these different coaches. We probably took lessons with maybe eight or nine different coaches all throughout the Bay area. Wow. And you know, with varying results, I think, you know, there are a lot of good coaches out there, but we just ended up happening to come to Monterey. Um, and, you know, as Patrick said, you know, I, that very first lesson, I noticed there was something different about that we taught. And I think what really appealed to me is um, I have a very strong natural science background. And one of the things I realized when I watched him teach and when I heard him talk about golf, I realized that um, the way they see golf, and when I say they, I think Patrick and Ben Doyle and sort of the whole school of Homer Kelly with a golf machine is that it's basically a physical system. It's physics, right? It's just very, very straightforward, you know, action in, action out. And um, the trick about hitting a solid golf swing is you got to be able to adjust as long as everything's coming on plane, then the ball will travel in the direction that you want it to. Uh, and that was sort of my first breakthrough when I um, when I was watching the girls take lessons with Patrick. This is this idea of it's it's a it's a bound physical system. It's it's actually a very simple physical system. Um, and so the key thing you got to do is just make sure that everything is lined up correctly, almost like billiards, right? I mean, if you know you get the cue balls, the cue straight into the cue ball, you know which ball which way the cue balls are going to go, and. Um, you know, golf is essentially the same way. The problem is when you're playing billiards, you can actually line up the club and you have a very objective view of your target and of the balls in the pocket you're trying to go to. That's not the case in golf. In golf, you're standing over the ball, you're, you're taking the club back, you have no idea what's happening back behind you. Um, and so as a result, when you come down, the result is often not what we want it to be. And so, you know, this is one of the things I realized once Patrick started working with the kids, me as an outside observer, I could understand exactly what he's talking about in terms of, you know, your swing needs to be on this plane. And if you do this, then the ball will travel straight. But the kids, when they are taking the lessons, they don't have any of that concept. You know, they're, they're kind of going by feel. So in the end, what it ends up being is a golf pro, and I think this is what a lot of traditional golf teaching has been, is a golf pro trying to impart a certain feeling to the student by manipulating their body, by giving them analogies. You know, um, uh, uh, Harvey, Harvey Pennick was really great at that, right? He had all these little analogies on this is what a proper swing feels like. So the mm-hmm. idea is you need to develop that feel in order to be able to properly hit the golf ball. The problem is 
you know, without qualified teachers and without having somebody there like literally all the time to make sure you develop the correct feel, it's really easy to slip into the wrong feel. And if you do the wrong feel long enough, often enough, it starts feeling like the right feel. And that's what happens to a lot of us who grew up learning golf without, you know, having a lot of coaching supervisions. We develop these quirks, these habits, and they feel right to us. They feel normal. But when somebody shows it to you on video, you go, oh, my swing looks like that. that that's really odd. That's really awkward. And because you don't have that self-awareness like you would have, say, on a billiard table where you can, you know, line it up and say, okay, the cue ball, the cue is straight, the ball is straight, it's going to go in the right pocket. You have that external perception whereas in a golf swing you absolutely do not you know you're just kind of swinging you're inside you have no idea what's happening back here and what's happening coming down um so this led to my you know idea of you know god it would be so much easier if i could you know just show them what they're doing at any given moment in time and um and my background is in cameras uh this other company that i work with actually makes industrial cameras we make fingerprint sensors um, that are used in the homeland security and, and those kinds of things. Oh, wow. um, but, you know, so, so I work a lot with the supply chain uh, in terms of the guys that make all the cameras. And um, the funny thing was I kind of mentioned this to one of my partners and, in, in Taiwan, and uh, he's also an avid golfer. Uh -oh. And he said, you know, oh, this is kind of a good idea. Why don't we try making that? And I said, sure, go ahead. You know, it would look something like this. <laughs> and I went away for six months and I came back and all of a sudden he goes, hey, here's a prototype. And I was like, I was stunned. I was like, wow, this is amazing. You know, I think I can work with this. Wow. So then I was thinking, well, he's made it. I guess now I have to actually now make a company to sell committed. it. Yeah, right. I'm committed to it. Um, and that's kind of how the whole thing got started. Interesting. Interesting. I, I, I need to backtrack just a moment after you had the lesson after all those lessons with your girls and then you had the lesson with patrick and you a light bulb went off for you i mean you you saw something different when you got in the car with the girls what was their reaction to patrick well i i think you know the the uh, the biggest thing was just i know how you felt well <laughs> what were they you were like i think they were tired was just oh my God. <laughs> i think quite honestly much. i think honestly they were really tired they, he worked him because really. he's he's really precise right he won't mm -hmm. let you get away with kind of you know and just you kind of cheating that. through it yeah yeah and and as a parent you kind of see i think for the student a lot of times you talk to them um and even today we come back just a couple weeks ago uh last lesson we had was maybe two weeks ago she came back and she says, I'm completely wiped out. And, you know, she did a two hour lesson with him wow. and it was, you know, getting in position, holding the position, making sure it's correct. And you're working muscles that you're normally not working. Right. And um, you know, so if I think from a student perspective, it's it's exhausting. But from a results perspective, you know, I think his results speak for themselves. If you look at his website, um, you know, he has all of these college players, all these high level players that have been successful because of the way that he teaches, because he doesn't let you get away with, you know, squirrely stuff with just kind of cheating through the movements. So how did your daughters feel about it when you <laughs> got in the car? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's, <laughs> or or were you, was your head spinning so fast that you didn't even spinning. hear what the girls were saying well, at that I, point? I think they were, they were tired. Like, I'm fine. <laughs> so be quiet. So to put things in perspective, you know, we live in Cupertino. The drive from Cupertino to come down to Monterey is an hour and a half each way. Yeah. So to take a lesson with Patrick costs us at a minimum three hours just to get here and get home. Wow. Um, That's a big day for the kids. So, you know, they were tired when they when sure. they went back. But at the same time, you know, after after all the different lessons, you know, the the again, as a parent, my feeling was we're seeing results. Mm -hmm. Right. And, mm -hmm. and in the end, that's sort of what what matters, I think, to a parent and to you as a golfer. You know, you care about results. You don't care about, you know, whatever, you know, how uh, how pretty somebody makes your swing look. In the end, you care about the results. And, you know, is it working? Are you improving? And you um, feel like you're improving. you feel like you're improving. You make better huge. contact. Yeah. You're hitting the ball straighter. You're hitting the ball longer. Right. And those are the things that I think are quantifiable. Those are the things that are measurable. And uh, those are the things that in the end, you know, led us to come back and back uh, time and again to work with Patrick. Well, then let's get into live view golf. Okay. Uh, we, we've clearly identified a problem uh, and how the technology has been working towards where we are today. 
uh, and made life easier for instructors. I don't know if it's made it easier or more detailed for instructors. Um, but I think it's both. Yeah, but it's definitely uh, a valuable tool to have in your teaching bag. Huge. It's almost imperative at this point, isn't it? I mean, are there teachers who refuse to use video? Well, uh, we will talk about this. Uh, you know, like, for example, a lot of guys use the numbers now. They'll use a trackman or a flight scope. Sure. And they're strictly looking at that in order to determine what the mechanics are. Right. Um, and is that enough? Or is I that... I think it's... I think there's validity to it. Mm -hmm. um, however, I still believe that there are certain positions that are that you need to look at mm -hmm. with a video. Mm -hmm. I think probably ideally you should have both. Mm -hmm. But going back to the camera again, I think um, the camera allows you to look at yourself in real time space in order to get at the positions, in order to get the numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times. Yeah, as the shots get, it, it's not at as the positions and and the swing gets better and the impact gets better, the shots get better. It's not vice versa. The shot as the shots get better, the you know the swing gets better or the impact right. gets better. Right. And I think sometimes the numbers work backwards. Interesting. You know? you know, the camera allows you to work on how to get there. Yeah, in a sequential way. Yeah, I think, you know, and, and this this was in the end sort of why we ended up getting to a live camera. So I think um, working with Patrick back, Patrick is a big user of video. And so that's how I first learned how to understand video and what to look for in a swing. Um, and, uh, you know, he has his iPad. He likes to use his iPad to record a lot of video. Um, and uh, as we're working with the girls, we, we used a lot of iPads, we used um, cameras uh, to record them, and then you'd show them afterwards saying, you know, here's what you did wrong. Um, and the way I feel about FlightScope and TrackMan, all those things are, they're, they're helpful, but the problem in the end is that all those devices give you data after the swing has finished, you know, in the sense you know, uh, one of the things I like to say is those dis devices are all descriptive. They tell you what went wrong, mm -hmm. but they don't tell you what you need to do in order to correct it. Um, oh, interesting. And how to feel it. Right. Okay. So, so in the end, it comes down to this idea of you can show somebody who's off plane that they're off plane, mm -hmm. but how do you explain somebody what it feels like to be on plane? The on there's only really two ways you can do it. One is you physically take their arms and drag them into the right position. And that's what coaches are really good at, right? But for me, the struggle was, well, when we leave Pasadena, we've driven an hour, ha hour and a half to get back home again. Now what do I do? You know, our next lesson is scheduled maybe in two weeks or a month or something like that. So what happens in all that intervening time? You know, if, if people have built bad habits, they'll immediately go back to their old habits. Sure. So the only way you can at that point feel the correct plane is if you have some kind of objective reference to show yourself so you can check yourself to make sure that you are in fact on plane um, and that's what the camera that's why a live camera is so important as opposed to something you see after the fact you see after the fact it's done you know you take 10 swings and I don't know if you ever had the experience where you've taken video and you're trying to fix some swing swing problem usually on plane or casting or whatever you're working on and you, 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 you see it, you said, okay, this is the flaw. Then you go hit 10 balls, 20 balls, and you think, I've really fixed it, right? The ball is flying a lot better now. And then you ask your friend to take a video of you again, and you look at it and go, I'm still doing exactly what I was doing before. I didn't fix anything, mm -hmm. right? And, and sure enough, you hit three more balls, and it, the, that old habit comes right back out. It's because you didn't really learn the correct feeling of, what you're trying to accomplish because you didn't have an objective reference to make sure that you're practicing, you know, practicing the correct, the new feel. Uh, and that's why the live video is so important. It gives you that objective frame of reference as you're taking your practice swings, as you're moving to really ingrain the correct muscle memory that you're, that you're coming back on plane, that you're, you're moving the body in the way that you want to move as opposed to the way that you're used to moving. So how does live view golf work? Well, like for example here, 
I, I took a so video. So for of those listening on the audio podcast, Patrick has just pulled out his iPad. I just pulled out my iPad. And, and so am. this is being recorded on video if you're listening right now. Hi. Um, and uh, we, are, we are doing this on video, so you will be able to go back and look at it. And also, I captured some video uh, on my phone of Patrick here in the living room that we're shooting this. I uh, got Patrick taking some practice swings with the Live View Golf, and I'll make that a, a separate video on our YouTube channel. You'll be able to see that. Yeah. So please explain. So I've taken some, some swings here in the living room, and as you can see, it's very versatile. I could be outside working on the driving range. I could be in the living room. I could be at the office. And so um, I took a, a video, and now I drew some lines. One line would be, say, where the shaft goes through my belly button, Another, this blue line here represents the transition up to the, the top position being the green line. Now, once I have that, then I go back, go back, and now I'm live. And then I go over and step in here, and I can just track those lines, getting the feeling through repetition, getting a kind of motor skill development that I'm over and over tracking those lines and feeling the proper swing plane, what it feels like in my muscles, what it means to stay in posture, what it means for my head to stay steady, whatever it is that you're working on. And like we were talking about, people have the same swing. No, people might have a different swing plane than I do. You know, for example, Bryson DeChambeau, he has a very, he, his swing plane shifts a little bit. He also uses one much. length irons, right? Yeah, he Single also length uses irons. the same length, the same as the six iron. So it all depends on the individual. Jack Nichols had a very high swing plane. Would I try to change him? Would I try to change a Jim Furyk? No, I wouldn't. But he has a certain swing plane that's and he gets back square it's and all come, about getting he comes right impact. back to the red line or maybe a little bit above it but he's going th right through the center of the golf ball and um, has that forward swing bottom so from a coach's perspective this gives you the ability to um, draw the lines you know and to see your planes and then you, you draw those lines and then you go back and you're shooting video again so you can see those lines live while you're taking your swing, right? No, I, like for example, I, I can, I can, I'll put the, the iPad in front of the student and then they can feel it and then when they're So ready, when they're at a dress position, I'm trying to visualize this and, and do it all so we can like explain to people who are listening. Um, but it's, it's, so when you, you set the iPad or your iPhone down in front of you, or it works on Android as well? Right. Okay, so you set it down in front of you when you're at a dress position, so you're not really changing your position because the cam the, you're looking at a monitor right in front of you. Correct. And the camera is positioned, it's not the camera being used on your phone, it's a separate camera. Correct. So it's looking down the line, it's looking in front of you, so you can see it without having to like turn your head to look at different right. places. It's a second device that mm. connects via Wi-Fi to your your Android or your iPad or your iPhone. Mm -hmm. So um, Shane can talk more about that. So, right. So um, in order to give you the ability to monitor yourself, you need to be able to move your point of view outside of your immediate surroundings. And that's why we have a camera that's a separate camera from, say, the camera that you're using in your and iPad. And you have one in your hands. So I have one in, your, in, a, in my hand. This is the case, yeah. Uh, here's a case, and it's it, it just, you know, it's, it's designed to be very, very portable. So I'm, I'm going to hold up. I have an iPhone 6 here, and it's um, almost twice as tall as your unit in the same width. Yeah. So it's small. It's about the palm of your hand. Yeah. And, it, and it's about two ounces, two and a half ounces, right? Uh, four. Four oh, ounces. Four ounces. But um, you know the the goal that we had when when designing this thing is we we thought um, we want this to be something that you can carry around with you in your bag all the time. So I wanted it to be really really light. I wanted it to be something that you can use and practice every day, as opposed to having to go to a studio or having to carry a bunch of equipment to the range because today you're going to work on your swing. Um, by trying to make this as light um, light and portable as possible. Uh, we think it just makes it very accessible for you to practice. Um, you know, whenever you're, you're working on something, all of a sudden something's not going quite right, you know, this will be there for you. Just pull it right out. Um, it's designed to work with um, a, a swing stick, an alignment stick. Um, so it snaps right on it. snaps right onto the alignment stick. You, you basically can plant the alignment stick in the ground vertically. Um, and What if you're at a driving range that is off of mats and everything is cement? 
uh, we are actually releasing a, an adapter which will allow you to just put it onto your golf bag with a with Great. one of those gorilla pods that just kind of grabs onto oh, a little tripod anything. that'll just wrap around something yes exactly okay those perfect things. perfect um so, so the idea is that it's light, it's portable, it gives you that external frame of reference, and then you use your iPhone not to video but to watch. So right. it becomes your monitor, and because it's um, wireless, it streams the live video right to you. And then the lines are so critical because they give you that precision in terms of making sure that you're practicing you know, exactly uh, and precisely the, the swing change that you're working on. And it's recording this video, so it's still, when, you, when you're done for the day, you could still go back and look at it later. Yes, absolutely. And can you, if you're taking lessons with a coach, can you send these videos to your coach? Is um, it an ability to, to share the... Right now, the uh, sharing videos is a little bit complicated, but we're getting ready to do a software upgrade, which will allow you to awesome. share it seamlessly. Um, but but yes, you can pull the video off of the device. But even if you're not working with a coach, this is almost like having a coach because if you've ever had a lesson, you know what the lines they're drawing, yes. you know what they're trying to accomplish. You can do this all yourself. Yes, exactly. this all works all by yeah. yourself. And you the don't instructor could say, "Hey, do the, do it like this. Here's your line. It goes through yeah. the shaft, and then it go to the top of your backswing. Draw a line from your hands to the ball. That's your swing plane. Okay, that's that's where you need to fall. That's your your pie sliver or your pie piece of pie that you want to stay with your swing plane. You want to stay within those two lines. Uh -huh. You don't want it to go outside that plane. You don't want to go underneath the plane, but you're going to stay right within that pie shape. You're going to start on the red line and then say, go up to your green line. And, and that's one of the things that we, um, we try to be very careful of because, you know, this is not a device that, teaches you how to swing. We're not trying to usurp the teachers and the, the teaching industry because um, as, as we talked about early in the program, there's a lot of additional information in terms of video um, that's beyond just seeing, you know, whether or not you're on plane. You know, as, as Patrick mentioned earlier in the program, you know, a lot of it is interpreting. There's all these additional factors. It's not just one, one single thing. Sure. So I think working with a, a professional has a lot of value. But um, whether you're working with a professional or some people actually, you know, use programs like this on YouTube where, um, uh, where they get uh, advice from different sources or maybe a yep. book, yep. right? You know, you read a book and it says, you know, you really want to get more of a forward uh, lean on your shaft, something like that. Or maybe it'll say, you know, you need to widen your stance at address. How do you actually implement that? Once you have this information, how do you actually implement that? this is where the camera is really useful because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know you a lot of times you read the stuff or you get a tip on the internet or you know you take a lesson and then the disconnect is after you have this information how do you internalize it where you can actually implement it and turn it into an action in, in, into a usable swing right because um this is this is again when i you know when I, what i was talking about earlier is a lot of golf happens sort of inside our own bodies and we can't see from right. the outside right. what our swing is actually doing and right. if we're actually following you know achieving you know this this new swing thought or this new swing mechanic that we're working on whether we got it from a coach whether we got it off of the internet or whether we read it in a book right one of the things that i'm really enjoying here while you were explaining that um patrick who, the the video that you recorded of your swinger in the, in the living room here earlier uh, you have it on a loop. It just keeps playing, it, mm -hmm. uh, which is great because you can really study without having to like. You kind of get the just, cybernetics kind of feel, and you wow. get the you get the rhythm of you it. Get you the get the it. and you can see the lines beautifully. How have you had a chance to share this with other teaching professionals? Yeah. So, um, and how's the reaction been? The the reaction has just been fantastic. So, oh, we're, congratulations! We're, That's we're awesome. We're still a young company, but yeah. um, one of the. Uh, teaching professionals who's well known in the industry is Dave Phillips um, from Titleist Performance Institute. Mm -hmm. uh, he's actually one of the founders and um, he's joining our board of directors. Uh, I'm sorry, our board of advisors. Oh, wow. Um, you know, to advise the company on teaching matters and um, helping us bring in uh, top level tour players um, to help them, you know, get on board with the, with a product. Great. Um, There's so many products on the market right now and they, they're coming out daily it feels like new stuff's coming out um what separates live view golf from the pack i think again the, the the key thing that we've aimed for is to have something that's really portable something that's affordable 
And uh, again, in my mind, the biggest different differentiator is it gives you um, something that's prescriptive as opposed to descriptive. Sure. Right. So the idea that you can actually use it to help fix your swing as opposed to trying to figure out what went wrong. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that's been one of the interesting things. You know, we, we're starting to go out to, um, uh, to a lot of the teaching pros. Um, the idea is that they, they're the ones in the end who end up, you know, teaching you exactly what you're trying to fix. And their response has just been amazing. I think a lot of the pros that have seen this, I've, I've heard stories about, you know, Patrick's talking about um, the old school video. A number of pros have told me stories about in the 90s, in the early 90s, they would actually take big you know 36 inch trinitron tv monitors and they dig a pit <laughs> in front of the the hitting mat embed no, the monitor no just so they could show their students you know what their swing looked like because they realized it's so valuable and to have now that live we feedback. have a phone and now we have a phone <laughs> amazing and a wireless camera so you don't have to run any wires so amazing. you know you can accomplish all of the stuff yeah and this, this little package is 179 dollars. you just you know pick it up and you carry it around with you you, don't yeah, have you to just do beat me else. to it so the price point the price point is $179. Right. Um, That's really uh, a phenomenal price point in today's marketplace because everything seems to start at $250 and up mm -hmm. on all this stuff. Yeah. So and we $179. Work, and good. we work really hard to uh, make sure that this is something that's affordable for everybody. Um, and uh, in fact, today we're doing a special promotion um, with Golf Smarter. Okay. If you um, really? enter, if you purchase this, and at the checkout, you put in a coupon code called Golf Smarter. Sure. Um, you'll actually get free shipping. So that'll save you another $10. Awesome. And do you ship anywhere in the world? We ship in the United States mm -hmm. and we ship to France and we ship to Germany right now. Okay. So if somebody's in Australia or UK or... Um, we can ship, uh, you may not be able to give free shipping at that point. We is, wouldn't or? give free shipping to those countries, no. Okay. Okay, but the other countries? The uh, basically domestic shipping. Okay, so, so the free shipping is in the continental United States. Yes. Okay, well that's a very generous offer. I appreciate that. I know as a startup company, it's hard to give away anything because you're trying to keep your prices as low as possible. So I think it's very generous of you to do that. So again, use the coupon code. Uh, you put in Golf Smarter, one word, at checkout. Uh, in your coupon code, and if you're in the continental U.S., or if you have a shipping address in the continental U.S., you'll get you'll get that free shipping. Great. Um, what's your? Do you have a website as well, Patrick? Yes, it's uh, P Parish Golf. P Parish Two R's. That's correct. Two P's, Two R's. P P so A R R I S H Golf dot com. Correct. Okay. So two P's in front, two R's in the middle. Okay. And one more thing I'd like to emphasize sure. is that. It's great for the instructor who's working in groups. So, for example, you got five people lined up. All the time. And you go, okay, Barbara, I want you to just follow these lines. I'll be right back with you. Oh. And then you work over to wow. Fred. Fred, okay, you've been moving your head. I got a circle right here. Keep working on that. You got your iPad in front of you. Fred's working on his head. Barbara's working Actually, on her swing Actually, usually plane. it's Fred. You're doing everything fine. I'll move <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, right? Shane, <laughs> Fred, you you're on that right hip. Losing swing case. outside your yeah. right hip. So I'm going to draw a line outside your right hip. So I you can have one set up for each student. They can be working on it while you're there, and then you just peek over and, the shoulder. And they're working wow. diligently, and they're, they're, they're like, wow, i got to keep that, you know, that hip from going outside that right line. You know, and so uh, that's what they feel like they're still engaged, you see? Yeah. They're not yeah. there by themselves. Right. They're right. still My there. My wife's taking group classes right now, yeah. so sometimes she feels like I'm just standing there and I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing and watching other yeah. people. Am yeah. Am I doing what I'm doing? Yeah. And again, it comes back to our whole thing. It's Perfect. about practicing precisely. You know you're doing it. You're monitoring your practice. You're able to it's follow what you're doing. It's not practice that makes doing. perfect. It's a perfect practice that's that correct. makes perfect. And that's what that's this correct. camera is all about. It's right. about practicing right. precisely. Wow. Great. It enables you to do that. And what's the URL for Live View Golf? How can we find you on the web? It's www.liveviewgolf.com. Okay. Do we even need the www? Yeah, you do not. not. So um, we'll, uh, we'll have that in the show notes as well. And we'll also remind everyone that the coupon code uh, mm -hmm. with the price. Um, and I'm sure you're very active on Facebook as well. Uh, we're um, you Live View Golf on Facebook. Okay. So uh, you probably have active. a lot of stuff on there. Yes. And we'll, we'll put that video up on um, there of... Uh, that I shot on the phone, we'll throw that up there as well. And we have Twitter and Instagram. 
L- Live View Golf. Yes. No one's got. No one else has that, huh? Mm, well, it's kind <laughs> of a new thing. So it's awesome. And I, I do primarily Instagram as well. Okay. Awesome. Well, guys, uh, I wish you all the luck in the world. I think Thank it's a you. really exciting product, and it's definitely part of the evolution, um, the revolution of golf instruction, um, uh, uh, bringing it to people and making, hopefully, making the golf swing easier and better, more efficient. Mm-hmm. It's great. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Sure. Patrick, right. Thank Shane. Thank you for having us. Thanks, guys. Click on the link below to subscribe to our free weekly interviews on the Golf Smarter podcast at golfsmarter.com.